Hello and welcome to this very special episode of the Hessian Scrum. Joining me today is none other than Frederick Soldersberg from legendary black metal band Dawn. Thank you very much for accepting this call today, Frederick. Right, thank you very much for having me on the show. Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a great honor. Um, you know, first thing, something so many people want to ask you is that years ago you put a demo out, um, not a demo, but a preview song from the new album, the fourfold uh, furnace, and then it disappeared off the internet. That's correct, yes. So uh, the, the, the sample that we put up, that was uh, uh, put down on, the, on the, the site, actually, that we had up at the time. So uh, it went down with that because it was interrupted by some, by some uh, idiot. So that, that what was happening. Was that a final version of a song to appear on the next full length? Uh, no, it wasn't. Just a demo that we were recording, standing, you know, and playing in the, in the rehearsal space. So, not at all. <laughs> it was just a demo. So. You know, it sounded very good for a demo. That's why I ask. Yeah, but it was recorded in, in, in our stu own studio, with, you know, with the full equipment. So, I mean, I mean it was properly recorded. So, and... Uh, we rehearsed, rehearsed a lot of times, so I mean, it, uh, but that's not uh, something we, we we will use in the future. So uh, that's just for you know uh, knowing where we were at the time. Yeah, I ju uh, you know I was just saying uh, what we heard on that uh, demo of the fourfold furnace was, you know, you s there's an evolution stylistically, but you still have that same amount of emotion. That's, you know, that's always been present in your music, you know, no matter the era, you know, whether it's the demos or Slaughter Sun, there's it's always something very, um, how would you, it's not subdued, it's very expressive, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, you can say that, yeah, I mean, I mean just continue where we were, and then it's been developed during the years, it stopped many times, and then I've been coming back to the songs again and again and again and again because of all the things that have happened. So I'm taking up the project and then uh, we try to fix as many things as possible uh, along the, as things uh, unfolded. So that's what we have done. Yeah. You know, it's uh, very impressive because, you know, I've been looking back through quite a few of your old interviews. And one band that, you know, you mention as an influence that, like, not many people talk about, but you mentioned quite a bit, is Infernal Majesty. Can you tell us a bit more how they influenced your music, you know, compared to, like, Slayer or something else? Uh, I mean, my, my first experience uh, with, uh, with music was, uh, I mean, had nothing to do with metal, actually. It was a rock band from Canada called Saga, which was a progressive, or is today still, uh, progressive rock band that, that my father introduced to me so uh, especially the first three albums and that got my attention to music in the first place and this was the late 70s so it's a long time ago and then it developed from there uh, as a young teenager uh, or yeah before that actually because I was very young when I started listening to music and not play for, you know, I started to play in the late late 70s, maybe 79 or 80 or something. I picked up the guitar in my house and the piano, of course. So, uh, so my first um, guitar, if that I tried to play, was probably breaking the law with you just read. But, uh, and then I started to, you know, listen to everything related to, to uh, rock and metal in the, in the early 80s. Like, you know, Ozzy, uh, Ozzy Osbourne and uh, Randy Rose, of course. And then uh, it took another turn with Jake Lee there, but it was, yeah, fantastic, fantastic as well. And then as time went by, uh, I just went in a completely another direction with all these bands that turned, you know, playing for perfect into something completely different, like bands like Celtic Frost, Slayer, Metallica, and so on. And that, w that was a different path. So, but then, you know, even I can 
put, I, I always think as well uh, that I can do music. If these guys can do m- music, not Slayer, uh, because they, I was looking up to them in a, in a special way, because I couldn't even play that music because it was, it was so fast. But the Celtic Cross it took like another turn, you know, in, in the early 80s with, with those bands, because, you know, Celtic Cross music were not so uh, complicated like Slayer. Slayer is a, you know, technical band in that purpose. So, so I think Celtic Frost was one of the bands that, you know, maybe I can do this. And then we started to do songs at home and stuff, my brother and I, and, you know, it went from there, some uh, some, some kind of a path from there. Uh, so I um, think, uh, you know, I'm a combo of all twists and turns in progressive rock, hard rock and metal from the 80s. And uh, the things that inspires me are always musicians that had the right feel and performance and sound. And regarding Infer the Majesty that you uh, asked me about is that that was later on in the 80s, but the things with uh, in Infer the Majesty that was unique was that they turned trash metal and heavy metal and went into, you know, a special soup. It was a darker, but it still was the trash and heavy metal. It was everything, and uh, I think that what was what I meant in the interview that uh, was so inspiring me. Uh, a band that really, really uh, mixed genres and attacks like what they did. did. Uh, yeah. Probably that's why I started to mix genres myself without really now the outcome of it. Yeah. Especially when we formed Dawn in, in, in the in, in the eighty nine ninety era, uh, so yeah, that's how it was. Long answer, but <laughs> no, uh, it's uh, very interesting. You know, there's a lot of stuff to uh, to pick out there. You know, um, did you feel you know on the Blizzard of Oz and Diary of a Madman? You know, the the lyrics start to deal with some of the darker themes, despite it being a very um, somewhat mainstream friendly album. Like the, the themes of like Mister Crowley. Or um, you know the diary of the Ma- madman, the ballad itself, or any of those songs, they inf- maybe pull you towards a dark, dark, darker direction. I don't think so. I think it was just the fantastic music that uh, that they did. It was it was easy? I mean, it was like I mean, if you look back in, in 1980 when the Breaking Law album came out, that album was very simple, and it reached out to kids, and I was just one of them. It was simple, and you can just you know, listen to one song three minutes, and you know, okay, this is the shit, you know. Yeah. The same with the also did the first Ossi album, it, but it was more complicated with the guitar stuff, and it was something that was you know with his playing that was very very interesting. I mean, it took from from eighty to eighty two that was really interesting times, because all these you know guitar giants were born, you know, uh, in the beginning of the eighties, late seventies. Uh, so out of I, the dark half is definitely. I mean, when we came to you know the more I'd say more Metallica, Celtic Frost, and Slayer, and so on. Creator, of course. I mean, it's uh, in, in, in '85 there, and Iron Maiden and such bands as well. It was darker than than I think also uh, in the early days. It was it was more about you know uh, I think. It was. It, it, it wasn't that dark at the time. We, we were as kids weren't thinking that. You know, we just. It was. It was like a comic book more, but with very good songs. Mm-hmm. My, I think my first reaction to, to especially this of us was that this is like a comic book on the front page. Uh, but then I turned on the music and it was a different story. So, the, I didn't take it seriously. Uh, I think. <laughs> first and then I, I listened to the music and the music was really good so yeah yeah that's how it was yeah because you know uh, despite the constant uh, stylistic changes throughout your career you know it seems that being melodic has always been the central aspect of your style you know why is that and you know as a double question why was it so um, symptomatic of the earlier Swedish scene you know the the Stockholm scene I'd say it's um, 
regarding my playing and songwriting is that what do you mean y yeah you know it's always been very melodic you know from the death metal demos you know demo one apparition all the way you know to slaughter sun yeah i, I mean the, the playing hand been various a lot it's been very for a lot three years and i've been listening to so much music so my playing and, and songwriting approaches varies a lot, and I don't have any exact way to do things. Uh, when the mood strikes my, me, I'm, I grab my grab my guitar and play it. You know, so guitar playing for me is about an emotional outlet rather than technical thing. It's an emotional expression, and out of that, I kind of formulate ideas, and that turns into songs. And uh, so the me melodies. They come out of the emotional expression, I say. Um, but do, you, um, do you have any tools on your guitars to kind of like create the melodies? Um, any knowledge or theory, or just kind of uh, you know certain patterns that you go back to? Mm, I, I I think I uh, um, I mean if you if you look at the uh, the whole scene with the death metal thing, the death metal thing. It was, I mean, it was completely impossible to, you know, hum to a song. That's what I'm doing. I'm going around and thinking about the melodies. And that's what we did in the early days as well. I was, you know, we were discussing a lot of uh, things reg regarding uh, a melody. You can do it like this or this or uh, I came up with an idea and or the, the other guitarist at the time, he came up with uh, ideas. So, and that's what I have continued with. So it must be a, a good risk that really, really catches your, your brain. So I will, if I uh, make a guitar riff that I like, I will never forget it for next day or, you know, uh, that I look for granted. I will never do that. So it, if it's good, it's, if it's good. And so it's all about the melody. Mm, do you get, because you know you take some of those um, some of those melodies you know especially later on like uh, the kind of climatic one in the the knell and the world for example the kind of big very bombastic one that appears like halfway throughout the song um, it's hummable but it's all, it also sounds pretty complex to play yes and no I mean it's uh, it's uh, the, the complexity of the playing may be that it's the, the, the songs at the time were very long. That's maybe something people would find complex. Because it's very, you know, you have, really have to have stamina to play the songs. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah. yeah. So that's maybe a new, maybe you have to have new techniques. You, you know, really, really can dig in for nine minutes and play extremely intense. But the, the riffs themselves, maybe some of them are technical, or maybe they are more like, you know, some of the technical parts are actually heavy metal. Uh, so mo most of the riffs are actually quite simple when you, when you look at them. But it maybe doesn't sound like that on the album because, it's, you know, it's really extremely intense drums and pounding bass and you know the, the screen and vocals over it so when it's everything mixed together you maybe think of it a little bit different but when you just look at the wrist they are not so so uh, um, technical i think mm. just some of them maybe right uh, you know well, what's interesting is that throughout your evolution right um you went from a band that has a lot of riffs in a song you know sometimes you'd maybe play a riff once or twice um, you know, one or two repetitions max, and that's it, it's gone. And then on Slaughter Sun, you know, you have a, your arrangements are a lot more circular. Riffs come back, you know, there's like riff A, riff B, riff A, riff B. And, and then you, you kept your, you know, your songs were very, like a, a small handful of ideas. You know, how do you have the confidence to know this is a good melody and this will appear a lot in a nine minute song? I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's about, it start, always start with one idea and one riff, and then I continue from there. So then that's how it works. 
it's it's not so complicated. When when I have one riff, I know that uh, I can present for the other guys in the band because it's always about the band in the end. So if I present something that I and they think are good in the end, then we can continue from there. And then if it starts with one riff that are really good, I don't leave it. Uh, to you know, have some riffs that are not so good, uh, like many bands, I think. I just keep on and try to make an even better riff that I started to do from the beginning. So mm. that's maybe also why it takes a long time to do these albums, because you have to you know really push yourself. Uh, so it's always start with a good good riff that you can build off. Mm. Because, you know, you take, for example, um, I'm not going to pronounce the full name, I just can't, but Nair Solin, for example. On, yeah. on some some of those uh, some of those songs, you know, um, can't really, let me remember which song exactly. Yeah, on Diabolical Beauty, you go through so many different types of riffs very quickly. You know, there are black metal riffs, death metal riffs, everything, but it's just uh, changed so quickly. And what surprised me is that some of the stuff sounds insanely like Emperor, despite the album coming out a month and a half uh, before in the Nightside Eclipse. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it was so many music, uh, so so much music I have listened to already at the time. I mean, um, on the demos, the early demos and stuff, we we were not satisfied, and that's. Uh, may mention for you earlier before we started this interview. Time will change. Times will change in, in the in the in the nineties. I mean, it, it you know it, the, the whole poodle rock area. It went out for a couple of weeks, and then and then you, you know the the, the, the grunge era started, and and there was so much music that I didn't like, and also the other guys in the band. They didn't like it, uh, so we we had something together that we needed to do. We did, did we needed to do something new, and then you know we started uh, started to listen to all kinds of music with uh, you know darker up and stuff. So it wasn't only metal, uh, but the, the metal we li- listened to at, at that point that was more you know uh, the the early Ukari stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, sentence the north from here album, and uh, you know uh, Pink Floyd, for example, those you know the dad rock thing, you know those those old rock bands. I listened to that a lot at the time. So and, and the electronic music from you know the, the the Swedish labels that that put out a lot of electronic music and in the early nineties, I had the. It was really special because I had the, the label for one of the electronic music uh, uh, labels. They were just opposite me from the street from my apartment at the time. So I went to that store and just dig in and, and talked to that guy. He was a really nice guy there in the, in, 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 on, that, uh, on that label. And the label had this small uh, uh, store for a while. For, I think it was for one and a half year. And then I went there and bought music and uh, I dig in my father's records and you know it was uh, you know we, and then it went you know into this black metal thing without the early dark film and stuff that we like so you know it was it started there and then Nair Solen came out so you know your style has been emulated a lot over the years but no one seems to quite get it right. You know, why is that? Uh, excuse me, I don't understand you. What do you mean? As in, you know, people have tried to play, um, you know, music in the style of Slaughter Sun or Nair Solen yeah. or even the 96 EP. But then, you know, a lot of time it sounds very sugary, almost like pop music. Or sometimes it's just like bands are literally stealing riffs note for note. <laughs> that may be right, but uh, I mean... It's it's like everything. If you like we did, we did we didn't know so much because this was you know before the internet. You, you, we just listened to music and then it went to a, a, a big soup of that. And I think to to make this music, you have to really really uh, dig into 
how to play heavy metal. You know, the early heavy metal and, and rock and guitar. I mean, I've been into so much guitar playing before this even had the night this even happened. You know, it was a long learning curve, and and then came the thrash, and, and and then came death metal, and then black metal, and then then we liked the atmosphere of the black metal, and then but we there were a lot of things that we didn't like. We didn't like the lo-fi thing that that came from Norway. Even, even, even I mean, we, we were we didn't want to play. The low five black metal that we call like uh, dogs, and that we like the, the, the bands, but just some of it. Uh, so what we had is, you know, the roots in the heavy metal, and then the trash, and then the which was the most found music at the time, and very hard to play. So we we know how to play the heavy metal and trash and death metal as well. Mm. And then we came to this, uh, so it. We opened up the new music that was nothing to do with metal, you know. Uh, the, the, we, we tried to, to, you know, just cooperate everything that we could. So uh, it's, a, it's all about the music expression, I think, in the end. Uh, like, like I mentioned earlier for you. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, um, very understandable. So can you tell us, you know, um, what can you tell us about the new album that's going to come out soon, hopefully, and when or what, or how? Yeah, yeah, and it's been it's, it's been a very strange situation with the, you know the, in, the, in the many people were thinking that uh, we 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 actually stopped after the slaughter some album came out, but uh, that was quite opposite actually. And uh, me, me and myself, I uh, started to do other things as well, of course, and the other guys as well. But we, we went in different direction. Some other guys, uh, for example, Yuki started to work with Thomas Skogsberg in, in Sunlight Studio at the time. And then he put, put you know, uh, Dawn on the shelf. He said, I, I can't do this anymore because it takes so much time. Mm. So, and then I went into the songwriting part in I think in late 1998 I think and to start to do, do a new album so I just sat down in my apartment because I just moved to Stockholm as well not far from from the drummer actually but he didn't play in the band anymore so I was just you know I didn't know what what to do that other than you know start to do to to, to make uh, uh, a living in Stockholm and then uh, yeah play my, continue to, to do, do new songs uh, because I think it's fun to, to, to make music. So just started a new pure project uh, with the, the new album and then uh, Thomas Astlund from uh, Dark Funeral, uh, he came into the picture. Uh, and then, then we started to rehearse a lot in 1999. Uh, and and then after that, that was um, uh, we, we we worked on it for until two thousand and I think two thousand and one. And then after two thousand and one, we got a, the, the album contract with War Music. So then we signed to War Music, and then the the whole uh, thing with the labels that went bankrupt came. So, war music, they uh, went bankrupt, <laughs> and Dawn was out of the picture. And then in 2000, I think it was 2003, we signed a new contract with MNW, the Funerals label at the time. And then they went bankrupt after I think eight months of a month after we signed that contract, they went bankrupt like many of the labels did in, in the early 2000s. And then I think Thomas, he, he was really into playing in a band full time at that point in his life. So he uh, auditioned for the section and went on tour with the section and you know, all this whole story with the section in, in 2000, between 2004 and 2006. So uh, yeah. 
that, that, that was what happened. So this, this, the, the slaughter album, it was de- developed on under a very long time uh, until we started to play again after Jon Nödvitt's death in 2006, in September uh, 2006, I think it was. So, yeah. So, a lot of things have happened. So, but we came together again in, in 2015 and then st- and started to look at the demos again and start to record stuff. So, that's what, where we are today. So a lot of years have passed by. It's, it's absolute insanity, you know. How do you manage to stay motivated and uh, passionate for this kind of music, you know, after all that's happened to you, and especially, you know, all these years you've been into it? Uh, it's uh, it's actually really, really simple. I mean, I, I, I really like to play, play guitar. And I lo- love what I do, you know, when, when I hear the songs, and, and I know that, okay, this this is this is a dawn song. And, and the whole thing, I have my own studio at home, and then I have my, you know, guitars and my basses, you know, and I love all the things surrounding the band as well, so, and if I'm lucky one day, and or two, I may come up with something that can be worth recording, it's all about the rest of the songs, actually, and I also really like, the, you know, my guitars and, and the, the, the amps, and uh, yeah, like we do now, the interview. I just love everything that related to the band. You know, it's uh, it will never uh, it will never be uh, be boring because I talk to people over the internet almost every week, and they want to hear some new music. So <laughs> I really can. I really hope that we can get this album out uh, out this year, but I'm not sure, or next year. Will, will you be touring for the album? I don't think so. I don't think so because of the guys in the band. Yeah, they, they work as me full time and we have our lives and families and stuff. But I don't think so. But I, I, really, I really hope that we can play live, but maybe not with this lineup as it is now at this point. So, uh, but uh, it, it's really it's really up to to the other guys to say if they want to play live or not. So uh, it's a really, you know, it's really hard. We need to be uh, at least five people. Uh, so one extra guitarist need to be there because of the songs, the complexity in the songs there. Uh, yeah, and so on. So that's how it is. All right. Um, I think, you know, we've pretty much uh, wrapped everything up, but I've got one final question. You don't have yeah. to, you don't have to answer this, but it's going to be a tricky one. What, what is your favorite Dawn song? Um, I think it's uh, Iceland. Oh, that's a great choice. From the, from, from, uh, the Nelson album. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I think we, we, you know, it was kind of a um, Iron, Maiden, Iron Maiden meets um, heavy metal uh, and, and dark rooms. Uh, you know, Eucharist thing there in the middle of the song and yeah, it kind of the, the epic thing started as well with the, with the, the, the keyboards. We, we landed in some keyboards there and some bass parts that are cool there. And you know, you know it's spaced out a little bit. Mm. So that's a, it's a great, it's a fun uh, song to play. So uh, I'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, for, I forgot to ask you one final, final thing, I promise. Um, you know, yeah, no on... I think, you know, on Malediction uh, Murder, like, the end goes absolutely insane. Like, how did that come to you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, I think it was uh, uh, the, the riff itself. The riff itself, it's, uh, you know, it's uh, divided in, in two parts with the, the melodic thing, and the drums are changing uh, a couple of times. Hmm. So and also the repeating vocals uh, on the end there, and it's good that you. It's great that you mentioned that because then the new album will actually uh, end in the same way. Oh, now I'm very excited. <laughs> but it's a completely new composition, yeah. of course, and the new riff, and so uh, so you, you have seen something to think about there. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, Oh, perfect. Well, thank you very much, Frederick, for, you know, giving us this time.
Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's all so thank you all. My my pleasure. Have a good evening. All right. Have a good evening. Bye. Bye. Bye.